Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. Skin. It's amazing, like a shield all over your body, defending what's inside from what's outside. It may be tough, but there's one thing in particular that can cause it a lot of trouble. Heat. Now, if you ever had a burn from something really hot, like boiling water or a hot pan on the stove, you'll know just how painful it can be. Well, there are lots of ways to treat burns, and for serious cases, there are some specialist medical professionals standing by. Today, I've come to Broomfield Hospital in Essex to meet some of the patients getting help with their burns. Today's first patient is 11-year-old Maria. Can you tell me what happened? Well, basically, when I fell asleep and I had my iPad on my leg, so, and I fell asleep on it. You had your iPad on your leg? Yeah, and I fell asleep on it. So you had it plugged in and it was getting hot because it was charging? Yeah, but I didn't realise it. Maria has a condition that reduces sensation in her legs. That's why she didn't feel being burnt. That was three months ago and she's still being treated. Today, she's seeing specialist burns nurse Susan Bozeman. I'm just going to take your dressing off, darling, all right? It was a deep burn, so Maria needed special treatment. Look away now if you're squeamish. So Maria's had a skin graft operation done, so just a very thin layer of skin was just shaved off from here, and then that was put over here where the hole was and stitched round in place, wasn't it, round there? And why do you need to do the skin graft? Why can't you just let it heal the way that you might let any other cut heal? Small burns can heal up quite nicely on their own, but when you've got a bigger and deeper burn like this, you need to give nature a little bit of help, because otherwise it's very sore and it's more likely to get an infection in it and it will take a very long time to heal over. Over time, that will go back completely to normal, will it? It will, it will flatten out a bit more, yeah. um, but there will probably always be a little mark. We won't need to put any more dressings on it now because there's no raw skin, so no more dressings. Is that, is that really good news? <laughs> yeah. The next patient is Troy. He burnt his hand three years ago. So tell me what happened when you got your burn. I was on the roof helping my dad clean the gutter. There was a cable right here. Um, but um, I thought um, it was a, a railing, so um, I put my hand on it and then I, I blacked out. And what's the next thing you remember? Well, I remember waking up and then I looked at my hands like... And what had happened to your hand? Well, um, well, first, uh, my little finger, it isn't there now, um, but, um, but it was actually welded onto this bit here. The electric burn from the live cable was so severe that Troy's little finger had to be removed. He's also had skin grafts from his leg and his foot. How many operations have you had? Uh, Twelve. Twelve operations? Yeah. Does your left hand still do everything you need it to do? Uh, yeah. Um, well, it still plays video games, so that's all I really need it to do. <laughs> that's a relief. Today, Troy's seeing burns therapist Vicky Dudman. So, Troy, how have you been? Oh, I've been okay. Can I have a look? Is there any problems? Um, nothing much. Really, at this stage of the treatment, it's just about keeping on with the moisturising and massage. So, what's the massage doing when? It helps to break up the scar tissue and soften it up. This is something Troy will need to keep doing at home himself. So, Troy, from your experience, what advice would you have for the people watching Operation Ouch? That they should be really, really careful around electricity because it's um, very dangerous. Good advice from Troy, who continues well with his recovery. Serious burns can be really scary, and Troy and Maria have done a brilliant job dealing with their burns. And that's what's amazing. Your body has an incredible ability to heal itself with the right help. Ouch. This is an egg, and in front of you, Chris, is a sperm. Now, you can see how different they are in size to each other. Now, the human egg is the largest cell in the human body, but it's still only the thickness of a human hair. Sperm cells, on the other hand, are 30 times smaller than an egg. Now, both the sperm and the egg carry the instructions for how to make a human. All right, Chris, are you ready? Let's open them up. Now, this string represents DNA, a thread-like molecule that is the molecule of life. And on the DNA is written in code the instructions for every single part of a human being. And each little group of instructions are called genes. So here we've got the genes for eye colour, here we've got the genes for foot size, and here we've got the genes for how long or short your legs are. Now, you inherit two copies of every gene, one from the egg, and one from the sperm. So I also have genes for eyes, 
foot size and leg length. OK, Chris, you know what time it is? It's about 5.30, I think. Wrong! It's time to make a human! <laughs> Right, Chris, we're going to start with the feet. Take your feet jeans and begin down here. Next up, the lower limb and the rest of the body, too. <laughs> well, aren't it certainly taking shape? But what about the hair jeans? Well, Chris, the hair jeans from the egg are blonde. So it looks like our human is going to have blonde hair. Well, not so fast, Sand, because the sperm has a set of genes that code for black hair but you only use one gene. So when we pair the genes up, the dark hair usually comes out on top. So it looks like, actually, our human's going to have black hair. And what about earlobes, Sand? The sperm has genes that code for attached earlobes. But the earlobe genes from the egg code for unattached earlobes, and those genes are dominant. If you've got both sets, your earlobes will be unattached. But Sand, what about the sex? Well, your biological sex is determined by big bundles of genes called chromosomes. Now, most girls have two X chromosomes, and most boys have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. The egg always carries an X. Now, sperm can have an X or a Y, so it's actually the sperm that determines the biological sex that you're born with. And in this case, the sperm has... Another X. So our human will be XX. My creation is complete. I will call them Zandina, a female with dark hair and unattached earlobes. And now, Chris, it's time to bring them to life. Zand, you can't actually make a human like this. Safety first, Chris. Put these on. I demand a million volts! This end isn't even attached. Three, two, one! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chris and Zan. I did it! Chris, I'm a genius! Well, welcome to the lab! Thanks, Zan! This is amazing! The fame! The international recognition, the awards I've always known I deserved. Finally, I'm going to get them, thanks to my creation, Zandina. Zand, this is not Zandina. I think the fumes have got to him. This is Dr. Rock. She's the new member of the Operation Ouch team. She's the third doctor. Whoa! Well, hi. Welcome to the team. It's great to have you on board. Thanks. Whilst we clear up the mess that Dr. Zand has made, are you ready for your first assignment? Yes, and I'll see you in a minute. Bye. Bye. <laughs> What's the matter? Why are you crying? I just miss rocks. You're going to see her in a minute. 